Hello, world. All right, and we are back, and this is the Healing Chefs podcast. I am Ryan, a.k.a. Crownsons Corner, and today's chef is actually Chef Derek. What's up, what's up? Ladies and gentlemen, bring it down. Um, so, uh, you know, Healing Chef uh, podcast, Chef coming from Chief, Chief meaning leader. Uh, leader, um, uh, everybody that we have on here is a leader in their own way, but we are chefs, you and I. It's our Absolutely. word. Uh, don't, don't use it unless you no, I'll just yeah. <laughs> Anybody can uh, use it. It's not, it's not that crazy. Just be good to your servers and your and everybody else. But yeah, Chef Derek, thank you very much for coming. Man. How are you doing today? I'm doing great, man. I appreciate you for letting me be here again. Hell yeah. Second time around. Second time around. We'll get all the audio this time. <laughs> <laughs> right? Hey, learning, learning, growing. If you don't know, uh, Chef Derek was on the uh, first season, if you can consider these seasons, right? <laughs> of the podcast. And uh, there were a couple things, but you know, that's 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 life and that's growing. And uh, Absolutely, man. Better. You can't learn how to do things wrong unless you do, do things right unless you learn how to do things wrong. And know? that's so. how it happens right there. You, <laughs> you saw see? it live. Right? Well, uh, you didn't see it live, but like, <laughs> he was doing it In alive. In real time. He was alive doing it. Right. <laughs> In real time. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'm stoned. <laughs> if you're not, uh, take your time and go ahead. We'll go ahead and jump into like the first segment, uh, but we're just kind of freestyle this one. But uh, cannabis journey, little walk through the woods, do do cannabis journey dip. All right. Uh, the last time we talked about your cannabis journey and how you found cannabis and whatnot, uh, I myself, you know, sticks and stems and all that, uh, the seeds and all that kind of fun stuff. And But moreover, how, how are you using cannabis in your own life instead of just like, how did you find it? Like, how are you using cannabis nowadays? Well, as most people know, and a lot of people do, I struggle with ADHD and the anxieties that come with that. And that's something that I deal with on a daily basis. It's something that I have to mindfully take time each day and uh, assess those things in my life because those things affect how I make decisions, how I run my day, how my energy is, and that affects the people around me, especially my clients as a private chef. Mm -hmm. And so cannabis is a kind of a daily thing where it I don't smoke to get high. I smoke to kind of be at a normal keel. And it kind of allows me to take away all of the dumb thoughts and the dumb anxieties that affect my thoughts and allow me to focus on, on what's real mm -hmm. and then make decisions based on that. And nine times out of 10, that helps me each day structure my day, understand what my day is going to be like, and be able to mentally prepare myself for that day. Mm. Um, and so cannabis allows me to uh, look at things from an unbiased place mm. and for what they are and then make decisions accordingly. Nice. So like more objectively than subjectively. Not based off of my emotions, not based off Putting... my feelings, based off of what, what actually needs to happen. Mm -hmm. for me to be successful in this situation rather than, oh my God, this is how I feel. So this is a decision that I'm going to just throw out there. Right. And, and, and cannabis allows me to kind of just come down from that ledge, so to speak, oh, yeah. and assess the situation from a more focused mind, if that makes sense. Absolutely. It does. Especially lately, I've been using cannabis more in my routine. And that's, mm -hmm. that's part of what you're kind of saying. It helps you set up your routine and Discipline is art, I believe. Uh, uh, many people have said it. Absolutely, you know? you've all seen the, all the uh, motivational things on Insta, TikTokagram, TikTokagram. I like that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Don't steal my ideas. Right, <laughs> so it's going to be a new app. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, setting up discipline is art because uh, another thing that cannabis helps me do is uh, go that that moment of uh i don't know if i want to do this and stuff there's so many things that scare me cannabis right. will kind of like wash that away be like wait 100 and like let me know hey this is the reason we were doing it um, right and for me like you, you hit on something there like, i'm the worst or I should, I should say i'm the best at getting in my own way mm -hmm. you know making decisions or not making decisions based out of fear and that's something that has haunted me my whole life and something that i have spent a lot of time actively going against in my life. Mm -hmm. Every time that I have fear of something, I'm 
pushing myself to do it, to get past that mental. Um, but cannabis is a huge part of that. It allows me, again, it get, I know it's weird to say, but uh, it does give you a, a level of clarity. Obviously, if you're getting smashed, you're not thinking clearly, you are getting high. But there is a level of of where you've taken a couple hits and all of a sudden you like wake up a little bit in your right. brain and it stimulates your brain in a way that you go, Oh man, maybe I shouldn't, or maybe I should, because mm-hmm. now I'm just, Oh, I'm, I'm basing this out of fear. Right. And, and, and most people live in fear and they don't realize they live in fear. And, <laughs> and then I'll tell you one of the, uh, big, big reasons of fear is because it's, it's monger to us on a daily basis. Pull up your Netflix. Yep. It's all fear, right? Yep. It's all fear of you know, horror. Fear future, makes ratings. Fear future, makes money. Future. Yeah. Scaring uh, people. Fear, fear of being alone. Yep. All the dating. Absolutely. Um, the sex. Yep. Um, it's just it's just fear based, and that's that's something that we have to be careful with all the things that we're consuming because that ends up showing up in our own lives. Yeah, um, even uh, as uh, like we can talk more in uh, mental health about a lot of these things, uh, but they all relate. But like most of the movies that especially like romantic movies or rom-coms and stuff that we grew up with in our generation all about cheating Mm -hmm. someone showed this to me uh, not too long ago and it's literally the woman is with a guy not the right guy finds another guy while she's with said guy and leaves that guy for the for the better guy But makes it look like it's a love story and he's the but he's the good guy right but they don't show the rest of that story where Correct. she does it again. And that's a, it's a cycle and cycle. it's not her fault. It's not, I'm not blaming women or anything like that. I'm just saying that's the cycle that they are showing Facts. and that gets repeated, unfortunately. And then, uh, so on and so forth. <laughs> but, uh, it's unfortunate that a lot of that, um, but fear, yeah. manipulation and, and molding of, of minds has started from a very small pinpoint and has now turned into, a uh, whole generation and how they think and view the world. Grass is, is greener everywhere. Well, I'm starting to teach myself that the grass is greener where I decide to water it. Right. Because everything else in my life in my 38 years has shown me that that is all bullshit. That's all You're temporary. You're all just lying. It's all temporary. It's all just an illusion. Mm-hmm. And what I choose to believe is what I make myself believe in the world that i am creating for myself and that's a real thing man what you see is what your reality is and how you think of yourself is what you become it's a real thing we all have different realities like Mm -hmm. the things that are important to me and and the even some of the things that i like don't even exist in your world right they're not even like 100 if i tell you about something and you never even heard about the shit it just pops up in your world but it was never even there if i never told you about it you would never know about it we all have to realize that we're all creating that kind of shit around us. And that and that's another thing that I want to talk about. We'll jump into actually, let's go ahead and jump into the mental health one um, in regards to. Yeah, let's go ahead. Mental health. All right. Uh, Trip Tales all about uh, psychedelic experiences and whatnot and what's going on. But uh, I was just talking to to somebody and i'm looking to maybe help start i don't need to stop messing with that uh if you're listening i was messing with the high vibrations uh back <laughs> on the set but i want to start i want to be a shaman eventually uh and i want to help people with uh guided trips and it's something that i was talking to someone about recently and uh i think i think that's a path path that i'm gonna i'm gonna that's start awesome taking. man i think that's a um, uh... That's a bold path to take, but I think that there needs to be more people willing to to do that work because to be a shaman, you have to do the work yourself first, mm-hmm. and and so that's that's the true path right there, is is getting through that work to a to get to a place where you're able to bring other people along, and I think that's that's noble, man. I think that's rad. I think I think my whole life has set me up for it. I've I've I, I if people know me, I've been through. An amazing amount of traumas. A lot of us have, and with that, uh, I've I've done a lot of drugs. But more so, uh, more recently in the past uh, 10, 10 years or so, uh, really focusing more on psychedelics and uh, breaking through with my mind and everything. But 
uh, I grew up with my grandpa taking me to uh, powwows and stuff in Missouri oh, wow. and stuff. So, like the shaman thing is is deep for me. Like, I saw that as a child, and I'm like, oh, I want sweat it I, out. I want to do that. Not that I wanted to. I didn't know anything about getting high at the time. Yeah. I just saw everyone showing respect to the shaman right. and uh, me getting explained to me what the shaman was doing was actually helping people and guide them on their path. And I would love to help someone find their find their path. You know what I mean? everyone's doing whatever job or whatever the hell but like once you trip hard and i don't know if you've ever tripped oh, yeah. hard, that hard and i'm sure you found chefing is what it is that uh, that but you understand why chefing and not just the the you don't you, you don't get on psychedelics and go all right this is your job <laughs> right no, no not you, at all. you find a path and a reason for that path well i think i think that you find it's funny is, is something somebody said this to me is like nothing in life has meaning until you're a human and you give it meaning. Mm -hmm. And I think that when I, I'm a huge proponent of psychedelics, by the way, I've done several heroic trips and I also microdose in my own life as a part of my therapy with ADHD and my adult autism and my anxiety that I have. It mm -hmm. really helps my brain just stay in a focus level. But, you know, I've done some hero, hero doses, man. And, and, for me, it wasn't, it wasn't exact. It wasn't that at all. It wasn't, here's a, here's your sign. It wasn't like that. It was something that was already in me. Mm -hmm. And that trip allowed me to realize that that was the truth that I was already carrying. That's what I was saying. That's what the trip does. The trip. hundred percent. Like the, the, you're, you are a square thing of clay. Yep. And the, the trip just goes. Yep. <laughs> yep. And then. Just like uh, Bob Marley said about cannabis, psychedelics, it's we'll all show yourself it, to yourself. It shows yourself to yourself. And yep. then, and it's up to like the universe speaks yeah. and it's up to us to listen. The problem is everybody as you're growing up tells you all those different like voices or nuances and coincidences and stuff are just randomness. Bullshit. Right. Somebody, I heard this recently and it really spoke to me in a way that I've never really had it speak to me before mm -hmm. but you know i grew up a christian i grew up in a christian household so i have a lot of ideologies that are attached to something bigger than myself mm -hmm. and 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 so i heard this the other day and it was god speaks to us people don't believe that god is real but god speaks to us through the rocks and the fishes and the leaves and the wind and the babbling brook and the ants marching across the concrete and the dogs running in the park and the birds flying overhead and to me, that's a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. And and I, I, I want to hold on to that idea because there is definitely something bigger than I and you and us happening here. And people feel it. They don't know what it is, but they feel it. Mm -hmm. and, and those that are seeking that truth are going to find that truth. And I think that people like you and me and others that listen to this podcast and feel the same way that we feel are seeking those truths and they're going to come along to that man mm -hmm. and i think that mushrooms and psychedelics have truly helped me tap into that path for me and allowed me to hone in on to what i'm supposed to be doing and it, and for me it's not it's not about being a chef for me it's about being a light for other people it's not about cooking no. cooking is just the vehicle in which i get to i yeah, get to i get to feed your soul Hmm. in a way that helps my soul in a in a way that is bigger than me because man i feel this thing i feel it deeply i feel it deeply when i speak about this because it moves my soul in a way that nothing else does when i get to be around people and speak to them and and connect to them in a way that other conversations don't allow me to um man that's what i, I that's what i take home that's what i take home from for me like my you. silence in my sanctuary, man, because that's what psychedelics have allowed me to do. Yeah. Allowed me to show people the real love I want to show them in a way that is un and uninhibited with my own walls. Right. It's thank you very much for, for sharing that. Yeah. Um, I, I, I feel, I feel that on a, on a deep level. And that's, that's what I'm, like people ask me why I wanted to be a chef. It was, it's not because of, people feeling less hunger right it wasn't because man this tastes really good in my ego right 
it's the it's almost the after effect. A hundred percent, it is. It's it's the it's the what happens when I'm not there. The 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 good feeling. The right. How, did I replenish not only your body but your soul? Right. With what I did, I don't know. It's created it's, a memory with people and your friends and your family. I do, money don't mean shit. Right. Because end of the day, I spend all that. <laughs> right, right. And I can't, I can't take none of but, it with me. But when I sit there at the end of the day or the end of whatever, and I get those memories. Correct. Of those experiences with those people. And to me, that's experiences with God. Facts. That's that's what it's about to me. Because God is wherever you are. You're about man. to get me to cry. Man, I, I, <laughs> hey, I, we feel this deeply. This is. I this, do. We don't. We're not. I we live this. This is not something I just talk about. We don't. We don't chef to be popular. Correct. Or shit like that at all. I get that question all the time, man. I get that on on my Instagram. Like, oh, you just do this for the likes and all you this shit. No, have man. No idea. It's like <laughs> you should listen to the things that I say on on my on my Instagram. Listen to the heart of where. I, of what I say, and then you'll know who I am. All this other stuff is is cool, and I'm grateful and beyond grateful that I get to do cool things and work with cool brands and do cool shit. But at the end of the day, man, I'm looking for the connection with people. I'm looking to cook for them so that I can connect with them and hopefully change their life in a positive way because that's what I need to feel whole as a human. Those people that are yelling at you about that stuff as we we all know, as I used to do to people, those people are upset. They're angry uh, with their own life and all the things that are going on with them. So don't, as you know, I'm sure you don't don't listen to any of that shit. Oh no, because I was even a perpetrator at times to be like, you guys only do this for this, and and I'll, that demon will pop up in me and sometimes too still, and I'll just be like, wait a minute. Yep. People like, and uh, we just have to be. They have to be nicer to each other. Yeah, Fuck man. shit. But uh, we can also disagree sometimes too. Everybody, you can, I, we can disagree, and I can still love you at the, at the end of the yeah, day. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm wrong a lot. <laughs> right. Uh, shit. Let's 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 work it out. But awesome. Let's see, and uh, let's jump into like, maybe a, l- a little uh, plug talk, and uh, that will be a. So mental health is. Uh, uh, we wait. We we. Yeah, mental health as well. We're we're jumping all around, but <laughs> I'll edit this into the right way. But uh um yeah, that's the big big thing nowadays um is mental health and and working on a couple things. Now, uh, I've been talking to people who have been using psychedelics and you're saying cannabis and everything. I myself the way that you describe how cannabis has helped you, I uh, describe how ketamine has helped me where it, it helps me remove my my shit my myself uh from the thing makes it more objective than subjective correct problem is nowadays this is problem nowadays is with our mental health we create and and with our social media and everything we create these echo chambers and that's one of the most toxic things that that could ever exist uh is an echo chamber we need to have people disagree with us and us disagree with other people we don't have to hate each other facts but we have to disagree because if I, if we keep doing the same shit and all this kind of stuff, it it removes. Well, it's insanity. That's exactly it's the definition of you continue to do something but you expect something different. Mm-hmm. You all you're doing is perpetuating a loop and a cycle that you want to get out of, but you're not actually getting out of. Exactly, and, and that brings more. Yeah, it just brings more, and and you have to. You, you have to look at things objectively and learn to look at things objectively, especially when it comes to your own life. Because if you're not looking objectively at yourself, then the rest of your life isn't going to be true, hmm. right? It's going to be a, it's going to be a version of what it could be or what it truly should be because you're allowing your anxieties and your fears to determine how you make decisions in your life, relationships, what you eat today, what you put on. People don't realize the decisions and how they get affected by your mind. And then your mind will lie to you. Because <laughs> that's another point I wanted to make with mental health is the cycles that we get into because we're comfortable. Right. And I don't know about you guys, but a lot of my past was toxic. So continuing the cycles that make me comfortable actually make me more uncomfortable than doing the one thing that makes me 
uncomfortable. Does right. that make sense? Right. Because a lot well, of uncomfortables. you're so used to the uncomfortable that it's become your normal comfortable. Yep. And mm-hmm. you're afraid of anything new because it's outside of your comfort zone. It's outside of what it's outside of the reality that I've known. Correct. You know what I mean? And tie that back in. I mean, it's I've done a lot of years of self-reflection, a lot of years of therapy. And, you know, um, I've. I've really the last few years actively have been focused on the future and letting my past actually be my past because I can't change any of that. I can't change the trauma. I can't change all the heartache. I can't change all the sorrow. I can't change any of that. But what Mm -hmm. I can change is me today moving forward for tomorrow and the next day and the next day. And it starts with one little change and that little change turns into two little changes and that change turns into a lifestyle habit that I now have created for myself. And 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 I've I feel like in the last couple of years life has forced me to push that that fact in my life even harder mm-hmm. with a loss of relationship, a loss of a whole life that I had with somebody that came to a tragic end out of nowhere and you know, there was people dying around that that forced a lot of emotions in that situation which was also tragic. But that has forced me to really take a look at myself, not the world, Mm -hmm. not anybody else, but take a look at myself and go, what can I do? Because I can't change the world, but what I can do is change myself and hopefully that impacts Mm -hmm. the world. And so that's kind of where I'm at right now. And, and not allowing my past is, is the biggest, biggest thing is that I'm every day I look at myself and tell myself that I'm not going to be who I used to be. And I'm not going to allow that to take to dictate who I'm going to be tomorrow. And I I really do these things. And I say these things to myself every day because I have to with my ADHD. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, my brain will allow me to kind of go over in these all these places and not focus on what is real in my life and start living in fear again. And I'm just not doing it no more. I don't have a place for my in my life for all that any longer. Um, I don't know, again, who said it, but uh, the best apology is change behavior. Facts. And I'm trying to embody that, but I oh, it's I hard, get, bro. Oh, I get dragged in. Oh, it's so I get hard. In. Recently, a uh, past couple of days, I was even reaching out to someone through uh, trying to check on them, but they didn't like the way that I a- asked them because I, it was indirect way. I was someone else needed help, but I didn't ask that person gotcha. to, that I asked to check on them. If they were all right immediately, I was worried about the immediate person. They were upset they didn't ask about them. I then asked about them uh, to to no avail. And then I ended up being like, well, what the hell? And and then that starts a cycle because I felt her. I'm trying to reach you, but it wasn't on their level. And that's a part of the echo chamber. We can't expect everyone to help us or reach us exactly how we want to. It's, nev- it's never going to happen. Well, our perspective is literally our perspective, mm-hmm. and we all can, can only understand from that perspective. And then, and then that person called me a name, oh, and I, I immediately got upset. You know what? You're just seeking attention, blah, blah, blah. And I called that person a name, and I'm like, God. And, and immediately that person posted that stuff on a story and stuff. And the old me would have been like, we need to hurry up and get all this stuff together and then put that online and stuff. And, and I'm like, you know what? Stop. You already messed up. Yep. You went to help that person. They, they got upset. And then instead of you just bodying that and trying to help them, you shot back at them and this is what happens. And I'm like, I hear you, universe. I'm not going to post this shit because... I'm just going to body this one right. when I should have done it a while ago. But you caught yourself. And that's, for me, that's the takeaway there. I felt really good about that, and I feel a little bit lower trying, like talking about it publicly. But but still, that's what gets a, it out, and you're talking about it publicly, and you're not hiding. I just don't want to bring up that who it was. And so I, I, still, I still care very deeply for that person yeah. as a friend, and you know, eventually we'll get back around. Look, we're other. humans, and if we're not allowed to feel feelings mm. – whether they're good or bad, then like, what are we doing here? I put, you know what I mean? I kind of put myself on this little pedestal now that I'm trying to do this to help other people out. I get a lot more attacks on, I thought you were, gonna, you were supposed to be healing and all that. I get that a lot. That demon comes to see me a lot. Yeah, people need to realize that you're trying to do something good because you yourself are also broken and hurt. And you are, you yourself are doing this as a way of finding your own path 
of healing yourself so that you can also help other people. Oh, yeah. And and I, people need to keep that in mind that we're all still human. We're all going to bleed the same. We're all going to die the same yeah. and go right back into the earth, into the universe where from which we came. All Everyone needs to get that in their fucking heads. As soon as you start cooking something, you keep cooking, it'll turn to ash and it goes back. Right back, man. Right back to right it. Right back into the carbon form it came from, bro. Yeah. You know, people need to stop putting themselves on pedestals and start having some humbleness in their heart and realize that we're all humans and we're all going to make mistakes continuously every single day to- I, I hope i keep <laughs> making mistakes because you know? if i got it right the rest of my life i be think boring. it'd be pretty fucking boring yeah dude <laughs> i've i've been there so many times and i know probably you as a chef and i think we relate on the really the uh, self-sabotage procrastination yeah. train that uh once everything is going well we tend to go what the fuck is going on 100 percent, and that's a trauma and, response bro and that's again the cycles and stuff we wanted to continue the cycles and get back to okay i'm okay i can strive in in the fire but we don't have to be on fire for the rest of our lives correct it's learning how to strive and feel that same intensity mm -hmm. outside of the chaos mm -hmm. and and that starts with for me that started with living alone being alone, learning how to live with myself, being honest with myself, mm -hmm. and telling myself that I'm being a, a dumbass when I'm being a dumbass. And that took a lot of years because I yeah. had to do that in silence because I, it, 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 the real work had to be done in silence. Have you ever seen anybody get their shit together? No. No, man. I, 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 I know. Everyone goes away and then they come back and look at that motherfucker. There's different Every levels. Every single time. There's different levels of getting your shit together, really? right? You you work on it, you work on it, you level up, but you're still working on it. Mm -hmm. You're never ever done fixing yourself and being better. And being better is in every, you should wake up every single day looking to be better for that day. And then yeah. let that day go and wake up the next day and be better for that day. I'm trying to turn life into a video game, to yeah, be man. honest. And I also... Uh, as we're talking, we'll uh, jump into the uh, psychedelics t stuff here soon. But that discipline, that setting up that routine is also something when you get out of your comfort zone for the trauma cycles that we continuously put ourselves in, you get that routine. That's what will catch you. Yep. Because if you don't have that routine, you're going to spiral again. 100%. I, I stay in the gym. It's 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 therapy for me. I do regular therapy. Uh, and uh, one foot in front of the other. Every day, man. We Every have day. to. Every day. And uh, I go to the gym, and I not just go to the gym to just like, kind of whatever the hell. I use that as a metaphor for the rest of my life. So I push myself in there. And no, not, not everybody has to do exactly what I do, but I push myself in there. But that reminds me when I'm like, tired or something like that and don't want to edit or don't want to, I don't want to do this. Though. You didn't want to do that last set, but it was, just like uh, C.T. Fletcher said, it's still your motherfucking set. So uh, get to it. Um, yeah, man. I, I, I strongly believe. I, I you have to, though. You yeah. have to be that person in your life. Because at the end of the day, who is? At yeah. the end of the day, you're in control of your success or lack thereof. Mm -hmm. And and I believe, I strongly believe in this, in this, fa in this uh, statement. How you do one thing is how you do all things. And Say it again. <laughs> how you do one thing is how you do all things. Absolutely. How you treat yourself is how you treat people in a relationship. How you clean your room is how you take care of your clients. How you get up and get show up for yourself is how you show up for the people in your life. If you're not doing those things for yourself, then you're not doing those things for the people around you. So what good are you to those people if you're not good to mm -hmm. yourself? And one more, let me say this. When we're trying to j not take care of ourselves and everyone around us, all we're really doing is trying to hide from them the things that are going wrong Correct. within us. Correct. Fuck. Breakthrough. Fuck. Whew. All right. Let's go ahead and move on to uh, Trip Tales. That was deep. <laughs> yeah. bread today Ooh, peanut okay. butter bread today and espresso coffee Oof, that's the that's the espresso that's what it's doing it <laughs> cafe bus 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 hey, it's cheap <laughs> <laughs> espresso uh so 
yeah, plug talks all about promo, telling people what you got going on or yeah. uh, anything that we, you didn't say yet. Go ahead and now's the time. Well, yeah, I'm pretty excited uh, to announce I'm partnering with Caraway, which is a huge, they make a lot of kitchen equipment and a lot of home goods, like but they're a non-toxic brand, which is a huge to me, especially in cooking. And so I just partnered with them. Super excited about that. You guys will so, see a lot of content from me coming from that. I'll have to check some of that stuff out because yeah, I need some new. Let uh, me know. I, I got you some, a code, homie. I need. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> we can. I need. Uh, I need some new. Uh, some new. Uh, well, gear. <laughs> Bro, the saute <laughs> pan they sent me is gangster. To actually, real quick about that, I saw that on your story. Yeah. What is that coding? So the that, code. If you go to check no, no, out, no, not the code. Oh. But the, the coating. So it's a non-toxic ceramic coating that's propri- that's proprietary to them. But I saw, uh, I saw you got a sear on that shit still too. I was like, oh, yo, and, and the pan, no marks in that pan. It was really? clean. And I seared the shit out of that steak. That's what I'm talking uh, about. It was great, man. It, it's it, too it, many ceramic I've seared and then it just, it's, and also the pan seared. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Look, Good I man. love steel, like stainless steel pans too. Um, but man, I love this pan. It cooks great, sears great. It's non toxic, which a lot of yeah. non stick Teflon is not good for you. They're <laughs> extremely toxic. All them forever Sorry. chemicals. I watch and too shit. much of the office. <laughs> but you know, I love it. It's a great pan. So I would definitely, if you need some, I got you, man. I'll, I'll hook you up with the code, man. Hell yeah. We'll get, we'll get the code going. A up, down, up, down, A, B, A, B, Contra, the, the code in there. Sorry, That's I do funny. that shit a lot with, uh, uh, we're playing Call of Duty. <laughs> And then we're about to win. Hold on, guys. I'm going to put in the code. <laughs> up, down, up, down. They're like, hell yeah, dude, do it. <laughs> We've won quite a few God times mode. after that. <laughs> I don't know any cheats, though. Yeah. But, uh, awesome. So you're doing that. Uh, you're uh, chefing it up nowadays. Yeah. Uh, so I work full time for a, a family. Um, unfortunately, you. Can't, can't say who it is. But I um, need to. I love them to death. Uh, they're great. Um, I actually did a cannabis dinner for them. Oh, and nice. they're huge, like, cannabis heads. Like, cannabis is a huge part of their, their daily life. It was like a act of god that i found this client because not only can i be a chef but yeah. i also make edibles for them i do Hell cannabis yeah. dinners for them i infuse their lunches sometimes which is pretty rad i love um, it man so i go on to dispose and pick up pick up for them sometimes oh nice uh, so it's it's pretty cool man I, I'm see how the universe grateful. works fuck dude. yeah dude i'm you know, happy for you absolutely man. i love seeing people. you with the smile dog love it oh man what have you been cooking lately man uh, honestly look Cooking for a family is far different than my dinner parties. Well, yeah, sure. <laughs> um, it's a lot of comfort food, meat and potatoes. They're from they're from the uh, East Coast, um, you know, so they love their steak and potatoes and pastas, and so yeah. I, I, a lot of rice. I, I try to switch it up. They're not too uh, experimental with the high end food that I do, but you know, we do a lot of. Just good down home. Shit, I meal prep every week, and I'm yeah, like bro. bacon, chicken, bro. Uh, anything's good. We do a lot of steaks, and we do a lot of tacos and burritos, chimichangas, oh, yeah. and you know, oh make shit, a lot of pastas. And Have shit yourself too. a damn chimichanga. Yeah, yeah, chimichangas. <laughs> we did that last week too. We had a bunch of chimichangas in the house. Shit, uh, <laughs> you're speaking my language as a white boy from Missouri, right? Growing up, and then we would go to the place, and they like. I'm like, man, this is fancy. And then I grew up and uh, realized it's just deep fried burrito. Yeah, but I'm sure yours are way better. But I was just, <laughs> it was, my mind was blown as a kid. Oh my God, it's so great. <laughs> it's a whole new world. It's a whole new world. This isn't even close to a burrito. That's hilarious. Didn't even know what it was. Oh, life. But <laughs> shoot, when I was younger, I thought being a chef, you just mix different sauces that were already prepared together. And make it in bottles. Good, and, yeah. and that's how they did it. Yeah. And I tried. I tried so hard. Uh, Rest in peace, Chester. Aww. Uh, but yeah, I tried so hard and got nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> I was mixing ranch and Thousand Island. <laughs> Stomach, ache. Stomach ache. Thank God I learned to cook, everybody. Right? And you don't have to eat it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm a very great cook. Good cook. Great cook. Anyway. We're all cooks, man. I'm a great chef. Fuck around and find out. Fuck around, find out. I will. I will compete with anybody but this man. Oh, <laughs> uh, I I compete with you too. Nah, I, um, I would do that if fun. I, hell yeah. No, I would always do. I talk to a couple of the chefs around here. I'm like, let's run it. I don't care. Like, yeah. Put it on TV. Who cares? Yeah. I, I I just like more uh, more people getting into shit and everything. And maybe I'm not we can afraid inspire. to lose. That's the thing. No, man. maybe I'm we not can afraid inspi- to lose. This is what I'm saying. This is the whole thing with this. I may fall on my face here and there, but this is to help people out. Correct. And to help guide people and stuff like that. What I tell people, man, is like, obviously I'm doing something right in my life. 
because even for someone who's nobody from nowhere, I'm accomplishing things on a level that a lot of people at my level aren't. Um, and so obviously I'm doing something right and the universe is, is giving me that, man. Do and, it. And that's, that's how I live. Look, what is for me is going to find me. What's for, I, told, I, t- I told a lady recently, I was <laughs> like, you do whatever. I don't really care. What's for me will be for me and what is not will not. Absolutely, so, bro. Man. With all due respect. Um, but yeah. All right. Anything else you want to throw in? No, here? man. I'm good. I'm happy to be here. Hell, yeah. sometime I want to. I want to figure out how to cook with you, and yeah. then in the maybe next year or something, we'll get something together and cook for some people. Let me know. Some good people. You let me know, bro. That's. Some, I got a house. We got a kitchen too. So. Oh, well, I, I have a. Well, I'll have people too. We gotta figure it out. We'll yeah, talk. absolutely. <laughs> Hell yeah. All right. Shout out. Let's do shout outs. Oh, where can they find you? Though? Yeah. So you can uh, hit me up on uh, IG uh, at Chef Derek Az www.chefderekaz.com um, and then uh, obviously just google and find me and there's media out there and stuff like that but i i stick to to ig that's pretty much where i'm at heck yeah, yeah. um he's on netflix all sorts of different things oh, yeah. food that network stuff. all that kind of oh, stuff yeah. check that all stuff. that stuff out he's on the the first season of this podcast the it's a little this podcast it's a little i'm rough. on cannabis uh, <laughs> cannabis 101 out of la podcast you can Find him um, on IG for sure. I'm about to be on a local uh, TV show called The Morning Show oh. uh, with Melissa Farley. So that's going to be coming up here soon. So that's going to be rad. Heck, Do a little awesome. demo, a little interview. So Fire. Yeah, I can sneak in there and, and <laughs> uh, get that food. <laughs> for those of you uh, listening in LA, I'm going to be on the cover of uh, Celeste Magazine Los Angeles in October. Uh, so that's pretty pretty solid. So sure, look out for that. in, folks. <laughs> so I'm excited. Hell yeah, dude. Make sure to, uh, if you're looking to do any videoing, a podcasting, anything, hit up Habari Entertainment, yeah. HabariEntertainment.com. It's uh, their Habari Entertainment on IG. There's a couple different ones, Habari uh, Studios, all sorts of different things. Find them on there. Again, HabariEntertainment.com. If you want to check us out, we got www.TheHealingChefsPodcast.com. I'm trying to update all the links. Uh, one man band on that part, but, uh, you know, stay with me. But shout out Hades Cannabis. Shout out Pharmastop, Earth Rhythm, the Cali Boys, uh, Cookies. Uh, shout out to y'all. Old Pal, uh, Ganja Advisor. Thank you for all the stuff there. High Vibrations, all the homies here. Make sure to like, subscribe, hit the notifications. Just destroy that uh, subscribe button <laughs> like you're mad. Start a bunch of new uh, <laughs> pages and subscribe. <laughs> make your friends watch it. Tie them down. Yep. Uh, make force them wa- feed force- them this their eyes open make them watch it and listen to it we're on spotify all that kind of stuff but ig at the underscore healing chefs at the underscore healing chefs on ig if you want to go on youtube they now have the at so it's at the healing chefs but the ig again is at the underscore healing chefs all right tap in smoke up trip out thank you very much chef Derek, for coming out it's been a pleasure we're gonna tap in some more in the future and do some more cool things All right, tap in, smoke up, trip out. Love you all. We're out of here. Oh, son of a bitty, son of a bitty, son of a bitty, son of a bitty, gun. (laughs) You thought I was going to say son of a bitch, didn't you?